Welcome back, guys. Time for a new trading week. Today, 23rd of January, and uh, basically we are starting with Canada, the latest, the last uh, trading week for the month. Uh, obviously, still have another Monday, Tuesday, where profits taking end of January might be the key topic, but. Uh, for this week now, these uh, are going to be the last uh, kind of serious trading days here ahead. What's happened? Actually, last week we uh, finished in some sort of a positive uh, mood and uh, markets were somewhat up and uh, running. Uh, something interesting, obviously, though, is that there are certain signs on uh, either situation, either way, uh, uh, kind of uh, signs on the horizon, at least, uh, which could call for some sort of uh, negative headwinds uh, ahead here. Um, we just need to see some sort of uh, uh, headlines here for general news uh, markets and general news events, uh, not only from Europe, also from the US. But looking at the trading side, holy moly, Ken Griffin here, Citadel, makes uh, a huge uh, a profit, uh, uh, had made a huge profit last year tells us that uh, obviously there's still quite a few dollars to be made in markets and uh, that we should not be somewhat disappointed in general, but instead focus on what we can do as well here um, as uh, Citadel's uh, 16 billion record profit uh, for their clients. And in fact, that's, I think, if I'm not correct, uh, if I'm not wrong, after fees uh, have uh, caused markets to be somewhat positive. What else is happening here for now? As I said, slight positive risk sentiment. So unfortunately for me, where I've entered slightly early here, uh, Wednesday, yes, Wednesday on Thursday, after this uh, bearish pin bar candle. But uh, for you guys, obviously, <clears throat> in case you are following me here, um, my trading idea was basically to apply a sell stop order that sell stop order uh, kind of was never triggered. The idea behind it was basically the market running to the upside, somewhat in overbought territory, not much, or well, not quite, not the importance uh, here, most important, but this pin bar candle where the market on Wednesday spiked to the upside, came back to the downside, the idea was then on Thursday to apply a sell stop uh, a trade, a sell stop uh, order, which uh, could have been another interesting opportunity to sell the market towards some lower areas thereafter. Again, on my chart here, on my account, I've took the trade a bit premature. So, uh, but if you were following me here, the uh, order I had uh, uh, showed up here as a sell stop order would never been triggered. Positive risk sentiment, and that's the key takeaway. Euro dollar currency pair somewhat rising. The pound is also on the verge to push back towards some sort of a higher levels. We can see the same also in kind of the preview currency pair, the Aussie against the US dollar, where the Aussie Australian dollar obviously kind of uh, trading back towards some higher levels. Uh, in this case, uh, risk sentiment, positive risk sentiment, at least uh, still the key part in markets at the moment. But the key takeaway is for me, I still don't trust these moves at the moment. I have the feeling it's a bit too good to be true, a bit of a uh, too much of a positive story, which I don't think is really um, making somewhat sense. I believe medium term, we might also still see that the Australian dollar might turn lower. Uh, one thing, it's a bit of a short term market here. We could see like a left shoulder head and right shoulder potentially. But in general, obviously, market momentum towards lower areas might be the expectation, at least the expectation which I'd have here, uh, calling for some sort of further market momentum potentially to the downside. Should the dollar take over again at some point and that's the key takeaway whatever moves up on monday might call for some bearish market momentum some bearish sentiment on tuesday wednesday thursday whereas friday might change the direction again in the end but nevertheless monday slightly higher maybe we see that the remaining next couple of trading days would head towards uh, lower levels. The interesting part, and that's uh, what I would say as well uh, making sense for me now, is uh, to be seen in the uh, silver market. Now, precious metals are heading slightly towards uh, 
downside uh, areas, which also in general would make sense if we have a sort of positive risk sentiment right now, um, which means stock markets higher risk so-called on currencies, which are doing well, doing the risky the times uh, will grow some sort of momentum. And uh, that's exactly the key, the key uh, takeaway here for me, where obviously silver is heading slightly towards lower levels. Gold is actually doing the same. However, I see this is just a bit of a retracement mode right now. And this sort of a retracement mode uh, might tell me as well, Monday lower, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the uptrend could be resumed. We also have to say something and let's have a look towards stock markets right now. The S&P had really a push to the upside on Friday. So basically the weekly chart is pushing hard against the, the resistance area. We have two resistance zones actually. We have not only the falling trend line, which is the one I marked in this chart, but we also have uh, the falling trend line as in the 50 moving average, which also acts as a bit of a resistance area here in this uh, in this uh, area and that zone has been retested and we could argue uh, with the uh, 50 moving average as a resistance zone but also the four uh, sorry the rising the rising um the rising sort of trend line based on uh, uh, these little dots here and these little lines on the uh, bottom of the area here where i say uh, well, where i see that the upside could indeed be resumed but with a tricky situation that i would guess hey, we might see something like this again, like a big push to the upside, false break to higher levels, market subsequently turning back to the downside and then starting to push back towards uh, lower areas. Obviously, I could be wrong as well. And uh, when listening towards uh, the big fund managers, the big guys from the industry, not only from uh, um, Wall Street, but globally, who actually push out some sort of warning signs uh, stating that, hey, the economy is not on the brink of a, a collapse, but we might face further headwinds uh, due to the certain uh, credit crunch, the issue that basically life and corporate life in particular is built on debt. And with uh, the increase of uh, interest rates, this debt essentially turns pricier for everyone involved, not only for private households, but of course as well for corporations, which is the key takeaway at least uh, behind current moves. And when we are looking at this uh, from a monthly perspective, there's nothing wrong to, to be actually sad about it. We could also say, okay, the market has been retracing. Now the uptrend might be resumed. That's for sure. And that could be something. However, I stand with my observation here and I would say, Imagine this maybe as a bit of a pin bar candle. This is what we could see. Push beyond 4,000. Um, don't uh, quote me on this. 4,000, 4,050, 4,060 area whatsoever, which uh, in the end results in something like this, telling us that uh, one day market higher, same day market lower again, a sell off uh, to be potentially expected. Why am I somewhat rather convinced? We can also look at the volatility figures. Volatility as its lowest in quite a long while. Volatility basically measures insurance prices, options prices against falling, uh, uh, against falling uh, stock markets. And they are seemingly now at quite low figures. This is the volatility on the S&P 500. I'd have to reload this actually right now. We also got uh, a similar uh, VXN volatility index on the NASDAQ. When they are at the lowest, then obviously markets are rising as figures, as volatility is low. Basically, the amount of, uh, um, of uh, indices, uh, contracts, not indices, contracts changing hands. But uh, the definite idea, of course, behind it is that volatility being low, translating to rather rallying stock markets, with the exception at the moment, volatility is extremely low but stock markets are not at very high points. They are still somewhat shaky, trading around in a bit of a sideways pattern. And uh, that's exactly what I see here when I combine these uh, volatility indices here. Let's forget about uh, the, uh, um, uh, this is the volatility index, the VXN on the NASDAQ. Let's forget about this, uh, um, basically these spiking moves here, but we can observe as well that volatility for the NASDAQ is extremely low figures here. And the chance, obviously, that volatility will see a sudden rise at some point. Let's uh, compare the past here and see when has volatility been 
lower basically in January last year. Subsequently, we have seen the same March 21, and we can see the market's volatility has kind of fallen subsequently a little bit towards the 18, 19, 20 area for the NASDAQ. Quite similar, we could observe things here on the S&P 500, but if you're looking at it from the S&P 500's vol curve, we can see we are quite at really low figures uh, January 2022, but we haven't been much, much lower. Yes, 15, 16, that's still calling for like 20, 30, 35% uh, uh, push to the downside. Whereas though, if volatility falls somehow further, obviously this might translate towards some rising prices in stock markets, but still might also call for some sort of potentially uh, rather rise in volatility fall in stock markets. And that's exactly what I believe here, is I think uh, that there might be some sort of implications further in a medium term, which could call us uh, a call for some sort of uh, a spiking markets initially, but definitely a rising volatility might not really push these markets back towards some extreme high areas whatsoever. That's at least how I look at it here from this perspective. We have something similar from the Dow Jones. The interesting part is that the Dow Jones actually has pushed quite a bit lower. The Dow Jones, let's compare daily chart, has also found a bit of a bottom here, but the bottoming in the Dow Jones was kind of rather lower, whereas the Dow Jones, let's compare this S&P 500 on the weekly chart, the S&P on the weekly chart would tell me the market found a bottom several weeks ago, pushed to the upside last week, the push lower, the support area was holding steadily in place, the market subsequently starting to rise, potentially ready to push back higher. So some positive risk sentiment or some positive sentiment maybe for the S&P 500, where else the Dow Jones is actually doing a, something different. This has given us also a bit of a supportive trading, but trending range here. But uh, two weeks late, uh, earlier, a push higher. And last week, boom, a push back to the downside, which would actually tell me that there is rather a bit of a worrying sign here where I see markets potentially rather falling. It's not quite the same for the German DAX, by the way, but uh, if we're comparing the German DAX and also the volatility on the German DAX, we can observe volatility in the German DAX is at a quite extreme low area where, again, the German DAX has been at a support, now turning resistance area. And if volatility rises, which there might be some uh, hints also for it to, to be the case, we could, uh, could then see that definitely the rise in volatility, or if you get this point here, it could translate to some uh, turning around in markets and some sort of falling markets again, where the German DAX uh, could fall again subsequently at some point. So that's my a key takeaway, actually, as we speak here um, right now. A couple of words of positivity, of course, regarding our, uh, sorry, no, our oil trade. This one is up and running again, basically back to entry, which is good. The market crossed uh, the high point uh, here. We were indeed able uh, to kind of trade uh, at the round and above the 81, 81, 20 area, which uh, tells me there might be some sort of upside to be expected should uh, the oil market indeed start pushing back towards the old highs. Uh, in this case, I would expect also that potentially the weakness, the current slight weakness of the dollar might help the oil market, of course, uh, as you've been uh, likely following me here uh, a couple of uh, times here, first of all, this is a play from the monthly chart, pretty much long term. But since we are also about to approach the last, say, trading week for the month here, we might see that this market could stabilize. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still one week of trading. A lot can happen. The market at some point could even happen to be trading here at the 97 area uh, as of tomorrow or whatever, the 55 area here tomorrow, likely not going to happen, but uh, we've seen those sort of moves, uh, especially the oil crunch here. You can see that uh, a couple of uh, uh, years ago, basically, uh, that was during COVID, March, April, where the market dropped from the 44 area all the way down here towards the 19 area. See, prices essentially halved. Uh, this has a bit of much, uh, a bit of an, uh, uh, motivation from the uh, oil's future market, which dropped to some point, uh, at some point at least towards even negative territory. So it's not really uh, with the spot market here being respective in this case, but we can see that oil is kind of uh, quite volatile at times and hence obviously a lot should be expected. So of course, that said, uh, always uh, apply um, a stop loss to any given trade 
markets can move uh, uh, quite uh, substantially at some uh, point. All right, we got about the record uh, return here from Ken Griffin's Citadel hedge fund, 16 billion. We got some other news, uh, kind of on the background uh, the story, Argentina and Brazil are thinking to develop their own uh, currency. Something interesting and actually something obviously where I would say like, let's see how the US are going to interfere. Is there going to be a war? Likely not, but that's likely not going to uh, be positive for Americans, not for Americans, but in general for central bankers. As one reason could be to first of all, um, uh, reduce trading costs to second, uh, also boost the trade between Argentina and Brazil and third, and that's actually some of the bigger reasons to me in the background of the uh, recent sad news uh, that uh, the situation could be to deviate again away from the US dollar. If we're looking at price stability in US dollar, we can just shake our heads around it. That's obviously what's not something extremely positive. The US dollar turns quite weak to not due to not only their own central banking policies, but also due to their fiscal policies. So that's something interesting we might observe when looking at the um, oil market in general, of course, in particular, looking at Argentina in this regard as well. And of course, that politically we've seen Bolsonaro news over the recent couple of months um, in Brazil. So there are something in the making, the currency supposedly uh, being the sewer. And uh, of course, uh, the uh, um, Brazil's uh, 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 Brazil's central bank working closely together and um, uh, evaluating how the situation uh, could work out. I'm not sure on how early the stages of talks are going to be, but the general headline itself uh, that this might be, there might be something um, to this uh, current situation. There's a summit being held in uh, Buenos Aires, as much as I understand this week. Uh, so could also be that there's a bit of a devaluation in the US dollar after these sort of news, uh, I might be wrong, but uh, definitely that would be something which is not overly positive for the US dollar. Something else to consider maybe might be also recent sanctions. If we're looking at Russia, whether good or bad, but we can see that when any sort of country doesn't play after the international rules, which likely are rather being set uh, by Americans or American politicians, then sanctions are being imposed uh, seemingly the same with uh, Russia. Uh, and uh, these sort of rules are obviously not pleasing uh, the sort of uh, market uh, in general. And uh, of course, the sovereignty of the general countries attached or like if you're looking back to Venezuela, Chavez back in the days uh, with the sanctions and uh, the sanctions, then the situation might actually be something worthwhile for um, uh, for Argentina and, uh, um, um, and Brazil looking at uh, that. It won't be useful for anyone apart Argentina. Imagine their inflation, Rogerio, big time, for sure. Fully agree. I just want to share the information here. I'm going to be interested observing it from the outside, how the situation goes. So let's see how, how that moves. But um, I think some sort of sovereignty uh, here obviously might be one key takeaway. Uh, and uh, that's exactly why the situation is at least going to be interesting. I think as you are sure is the currency potentially being called. So let's see how the situation moves on further. That's actually my take for the week. It's been still a couple of uh, uh, quiet uh, days here so far. Of course, we have a couple of uh, news events also uh, coming up uh, for this. Oops, that's wrong. A couple of uh, news events coming up uh, this week. So um, let's see how market momentum is going to happen. The markets are at the moment not really uh, my cup of tea yet. I still wait for some really amazing trading setups to occur. Let's see. I mean, we have a ton of patience. The year is extremely young still and uh, obviously we still have uh, a lot of uh, trading days here uh, to kick in. Wednesday, by the way, speaking of big news events, I'm going to trade live the uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision alongside with you guys. So if you want to tune in, please feel free. It's going to be a nice webinar session with potentially some a quite a, a big price action. The Canadian dollar has kind of really moved a little bit at the moment, at least uh, against the weaker US dollar. There are some arguments that we made that uh, a dollar cat could move back towards some lower areas. In this case, uh, I like the uh, trend lines here, basically entry as we speak. Let me see this in a shorter time frame in a minute. Stop loss 
13460 whatsoever. And then we had to, we would have exactly two, three, four targetable areas here where the market, if it falls, it could move to next support, next target, 132.40, another target, 131.35, and subsequently 129.30. I'm not sure if the Canadian dollar can gear up a lot of steam against the US dollar, but let's see how this goes. And then entry-wise, we want to enter during the kickoff of the European session, but at another low in this case, for the day the initial low has been done during the asian trading session and now yes we can see another low so i would say maybe a couple of bits lower here um the 133.52 133.55 area that could be an interesting entry opportunity sell stop order the market looks to be quite interesting here at least to, to celebrate some canadian dollar strength do we see this also against the um euro not so much but again, there is a bit of a market momentum potentially seen here in the Canadian dollar, and that could kind of cause uh, the Canadian dollar to push up momentum. Again, the news event is a couple of days away, which is cool. Normally, I like these kind of trades uh, to be in and hopefully see that before the news event, uh, uh, a trade uh, moving to profit or at least uh, positive territory somewhat uh, so we can eliminate our risk that's uh, at least uh, the biggest uh, figure which i would look for apart from potentially uh, cpc the uh, uh, um, personal consumption expenditure that could be something interesting low figures not of a lot of interest and momentum but of course general market momentum next to initial jobless claims and jobless in particular in the us uh, in regards to their higher push in central bank uh, policies so it could be something interesting so yeah a couple of news this week cpi also from australia so there is something to uh, be on the lookout for this week and guys i wish you happy trading for now great start to the fresh week here all the best and then talk to you later take care everyone bye bye